Are you guys ready for alpha? I know the team and your boy right here are super, super close. And uh, recently we've added quite a bit on the gameplay side of things, so the game is no longer just riding a bike around for absolutely nothing. Even though riding said bike around was pretty fun. Now before today, the game was simply a bike you can ride around on a test map. We had a score meter that kinda worked, it was that little circle thing in the corner. Yeah, it was alright I guess. But after we added the mobile support, that score meter was just bad. It blocked mobile controls, and it finally gave us an excuse to find a new way to do it. So we just deleted it. D get rid of the score meter, and we added a new one that also displays what trick you're doing, how much money you're earning, and your combo level, I guess. And honestly, it looks pretty sick. Quick note. Uh, the meter you see in this video won't look the exact same in the testing place since the testing place has no money. Like, you can't earn money, there's nothing to spend it on. In fact, from now on, 99% of any update videos you see will be towards the actual game because Alpha, it's looking like the end of this month. Anyways, the new score and trick meters in the game and it's looking pretty satisfying. The next thing I wanted to show you guys, gameplay wise, is pretty big as well. But first, we need to work on the map. To start, I wanted to go to the plaza and add in some mud trails off of the bridges. This will make it feel a lot more lived in. Right now, it just has like an awkward vibe. Like, obviously, people walk over the bridges, but there's no like terrain deformation. That's probably not the right word. There's no proof that it's ever been walked on, okay? So we're just adding some mud trails here. Nice, easy, and it makes the map look a bit more alive. Next up, we're doing another block, guys. If, if you've been around for a while, you know that the blocks, when we first built them, feel bald. This is due to having a block out and then just replacing that building with a new building, but nothing around said building. So there's a lot of empty gray space and it just feels, for lack of a better word, bald. First thing I'm gonna do, just delete the ground so it's all grass again, and then move all the buildings down so they're not floating. Now, since this block is the block that Misguided is on, if you don't know, Misguided is a stunt shop in Chicago, and uh, the guy who owns it, he's also a YouTuber, it's, it's pretty cool, and it's a big part of the game. But on both sides of that shop, in real life, there is parking lots. One that looks nice, and one that's like gravel and just bad, okay? We built these in the first ever version of the dream game, so we're just gonna bring them over from that map to this one. This is a great way to fill up some space and a cool way for people who've actually been to Misguided to see it in the game and be like, whoa, this environment kinda matches pretty cool. Now, a lot has changed since I first made the dream game till now, and one of those is I learned quite a bit about optimization. Yeah, I didn't know any of it back then, so I quickly just eliminated 90% of the parts, made it quite a bit more optimized, took a minute or two, and now it's way more efficient. The next thing I wanted to do was take this little store shopping plaza thing and move it back and add a parking lot. Once again, parking lots take up a lot of space and they're not too many parts, so it's pretty much a win-win whenever I can add one. They're also very easy to build. I'm just gonna paint on some grass, some hills, some dirt, put some trees, etc. Make the parking lot feel a lot better. Quick and easy map improvements are always a plus. Another plus would be more gameplay features. So guys, a super big thing about driving games is your ability to stand out within them. And the best way to stand out is to be able to completely customize your vehicle, in our case, your bike. So here we go, drum roll please. Guys, we have added paints and wraps. Probably a lot more to come later, but for now, this is a great start. Now, just adding some colored paint cans and some textured wraps isn't really that cool, right? How do we unlock said paints and wraps? Crates, baby! Now, I know some people might not like the idea of a luck-based system, but I do feel like pretty much every game needs at least one. Simulators have eggs, which people don't overly love because it's a luck-based system that gives a win-based reward. For example, the luckier you are, the way better at the game you are. But I don't think we're gonna run into that problem because crates are purely for aesthetics. Or purely cosmetic? I think both mean the same thing. So anyways, yeah, now we have crates where you can unlock paints to customize your bike and also wraps. You have a very small chance 
to get that wrap as an animated version of itself. So when you spin, let's say you get an ice wrap, you have a smaller chance to get an animated ice wrap. I think this is a really cool thing and it's sort of our take on the whole shiny or huges variants basically of the base thing you can get anyways let's move on from crates guys the score meter we just added a few fun features to it just to once again make the game feel a bit more satisfying two things we added was a speedster achievement type thing and smashing so when you smash into stuff and it flies away you get a little smash award just like when it says what trick you're doing and to get speedster, anytime you're going above 100 miles per hour, you will get that one. I feel like small stuff like this really helps with the end game. Just the satisfaction overall of it. The last thing the team wanted to get done for today's video was a bike spawning slash bike inventory system. Before this, we had something called the bike spawner, which we set somewhere and the bikes will spawn on top of it. But this just won't work. There's no longevity to it, guys. It works for two to three players and with, I guess, as many bikes as you wanted, but only six at a time. So they would randomly spawn based on what we're trying to spawn. It's just, it's not going to work. We plan on having hopefully hundreds of players on the game. So this bike spawner, hey, it's got to go. What if you get stuck on the other side of the map? Your bike flies into the water and you have to walk back over 12 base plates to get to the spawner, it's it's not going to be too fun. Anyways, here it is. The solution to all of our problems. It might get upgraded later, but for now, at least we have something. You just pop it open, click what bike you want to spawn, and boom, you're ready to ride. And this devlog alone, we've added ways to make money, new score meter, uh, all your tricks display, crates, bike spawners, inventory, pretty much a base gameplay loop. So far, alpha release is looking very promising for late in this month. If you guys are excited, make sure to drop a like on the video. And if you have any other small-ish gameplay feature ideas, let us know as well. And if you like them, drop a like on their comments so we can see them. And hey, maybe even add them in. I hope you guys are as excited as we are for alpha release because the game should be coming very, very soon.